King Arthur, Legend of the Sword, Nolan reflects on the relationship that Prince Arthur develops with a sword known as Excalibur. The prince meets Excalibur very reluctantly and grudgingly with much struggle. He sees his relationship with the sword and his destiny as king, the only way to end the struggle he has with the sword. Nolan bases this tale upon ancient books written during the 1400s. I have to say that I miss not seeing Merlin in this movie. The man has special talents, but at the same time, it is cool to see him remain as a mythological figure whose only existence relies upon our imagination. During this film, Merlin has sent a representative of his to assist Arthur in his struggle to not take on the responsibility of a hero. We are told in this story that the sword was forged from a stolen staff of an evil king who betrayed the people of magic that he worked with. Merlin takes the staff and forges a sword and calls it Excalibur. He then gives the sword to the king of Camelot to use in his war with the mythical evil king. Camelot is the final kingdom holding out against being dominated. Using the magic of Excalibur, the king of Camelot slays the evil king, unaware that his brother had joined forces with the evil king to take over the throne of Camelot. Using up a favor with the sirens of the sea, the king's brother becomes a demon and slays the king while he tries to send his family away to safety. In his final move, the king tosses Excalibur into the air, where the sword comes back down and enters the king's prostrated back. The king dies by his own sword and turns into the rock that only his son Arthur can dislodge. Thus the adventure begins, as Arthur fights against his destiny. King Arthur is filmed in a grayish tone, which works very well in representing an ancient tale.